Hello and welcome. So you can see I've got four instances of this chat room. You'll see I've got a host and I've named them. We've got different colors. You'll also notice that they're all pointing to 127.0.0.1, which is a local. So this isn't currently online, but it will work online. So I'm going to host. This is now waiting for clients. So I'll join. And as you can see on the host, it joins. And if I type, You'll notice that they've got the colors, got the corresponding messages, and if I leave the room, it updates the user list. Now, if the server leaves the room, you'll notice that it will force you to leave the client, to leave the server. you also notice that if I try to join without a server, it'll say trying to join. Eventually, this will time out. So let's get into it. If you want to download the project, it'll be in the description. I'm also going to put a link to how to find your IP address, which is whatismyip.com, as well as a link to my future port forwarding video, which you will need if you want to use this online with friends. To save a lot of time and focus on the network, I'm not going to show you how I place the controls, but I will show you the properties I've changed. So for example, you could ignore doing these boxes and just put in some buttons and labels. As you see, you also notice I've got four fonts and this is used uh, in the actual chat room, but this will be up in the description. So the important controls is the text name, text IP, opt colors, which is an option button and button host and button join, as well as label status. These are the things that we will change. On the lobby, I want to add a script, make sure it's in my lobby folder. I'm going to put in some signals. So on our opt color, we want item selected, double click that, make sure it's on lobby, connect, go back, button host, pressed, connect, button join, pressed, connect. And that's all the signals for the lobby. I'm going to remove this. We want to go to our project, project settings, input map and return key. At the bottom, I've put my return key as enter. This means that when I press the enter key when I'm in the chat room, it will post text if the text is present. Now I'm going to put in some variables. These are basically the important buttons I just explained earlier, the host buttons, username, etc. And we can then call it in code. So it should be self-evident. Our ready is going to call compile colors. And as you can see in the option button, I'm going to add red, green, yellow, blue, black, purple. You can add many more um, as you see fit. I'm also going to connect a signal to my get tree as connection failed. So we need connected failed function. And before I do that, what will happen is when we try to connect, if we time out for whatever reason, the connection will fail, we will then call the connected fail function. Um, let's put it here. So as explained earlier, it says it failed to connect to IP. Check that the server is open. We'll then get the status text, which is here. We'll just say couldn't connect and try again or host. We'll then make sure that the our join button and host button is enabled again because we're going to disable it when we're searching. Now we're going to need an auto load. We're going to go to our auto load, create a new script. I'm going to call this network, open it. We're going to put some variables in. We'll make a custom signal called update user list. What this will do obviously is update our user list. That'll be in our chat room. We'll determine what our username is. That will, that's from the lobby. What color we're using, which is also from the lobby. And finally, user list dictionary. I use this to store the users. Then I can populate an item list. We're going to go back to our lobby. Now in our button host, we're going to copy and paste this. We're going to network create server. Now we need a create server function in network. So this is the function that we'll call from side the lobby when we're hosting. We'll make sure that the server is a network multiply enet. We can then use this for other players to connect to us. We'll then make sure that we create the server and it will be on this port. And this is how many people maximum. In another tutorial, I will be doing port forwarding and we will forward this port. So this will make sure that you can use it with people online. We'll then get our get tree. And GetTree has something called set network pair. We're going to set that to our server. We then enter the chat room, which just changes our scene to the chat room. We're now ready to accept clients to connect to us. And we'll do that in a moment. We're going to go back to lobby. We then check our status is to hosting. We won't normally see this. It'll be quite quick, but in for every reason, if it is slow, we will see it. 
We then make sure that our username is equal to the username text and we use this so when we type a message people know who it's coming from. Each connection has its own unique ID. This way we know where data is coming from and where we're sending it to. Here we're going to get our network, our user list dictionary and our key is going to be our unique number and we're going to add in a value of our username. The reason I'm doing this is when we leave a connection you, you get an ID not a name so we can then look up that ID that relates to Runjun, I can then remove that user. So let's do our join, which is the client. Now we do the same again. We define our client as a network multiplier ENet. We then make sure that the client is create client, not server. And because it is a client, we're gonna need an IP address. Now I'm using local IP address for this one. And of course the port has to match. Once we've created the client, we then make sure that our get tree dot set network pair is client. By doing this, we automatically connect to a server, but only if a server is present. Now we're going to disable the join button and host button while we're searching for a server. We'll make sure that status lets the user know that we're trying to connect to this certain IP address. And we'll also update our username. If this does fail or time out, which is normally after 45 seconds, I believe, this signal will then be activated and we'll go to connect fail and this will just reset it so we can start again. To handle our color, we're gonna to go to our opt color item selected signal and just network user color equals colors.txt. As simple as that. And that is our lobby done. So now we're finished with our lobby, we're gonna make our chat room. Like the lobby, I won't be placing controls, but I will explain what I've changed. The most important controls on here are text chat history, item list users, button log logout, and text message. So we'll type our message, we'll send it, it'll go into the history, and this is our user list. We're gonna add a script on our chat room. Uh, on our button logout, we're gonna add in our press signal, make sure it's on the chat room, connect. So on our text chat history, that's our rich text label. The reason I've used that is that we can use BB codes, which make, means that we can use italics, bold, etc., as well as coloring text. You have to enable it, so click enabled on. If you go down to custom styles, you'll notice I've got a style box on our normal, and it's just flat, and I chose this color. When we press our button log out, we want to add this code. What's going to happen is we're going to get our tree, our network pair, which is the ENet multiplayer. We're going to make that null. By doing so, it will disconnect us automatically. We'll then get the user list dictionary. We'll clear it because we no longer use it. Then we'll move the player back to the lobby. I'm going to put in some vars and the ready. So at the top, you'll notice we've got our message history users. In function ready, you'll notice we've got a custom signal here, update user list, which we made in network. There it is. So I've just connected to this. We then need to make a function update user list, which I'll do in a moment. But first I'll explain the rest of this. In get tree, we are gonna to connect to network peer disconnected, which means that if a user leaves a chat, other people will know that they've left the chat and we'll use a function user left. And lastly, I only want the server to update the user's list. Once it does that, I'll send it to the clients. And to do that, if you remember, each network has its own unique ID. However, the server is always one. So I'm gonna make sure that, hey, is this the server? It is, then update the user list. Let's put in those two functions now. So update user list is gonna be called when a user is added to the chat. We're gonna clear the item list on the right. Then we're gonna loop through each item in the dictionary and the key is going to be the unique ID. Then we're gonna to add to the, the list box on the right and we're gonna do the name, which is the value from that key. User left, this is gonna happen obviously when the network pair disconnected. We're gonna find the user's key, which is the ID, and we'll erase it at that key. We'll then update the list to make sure that the erased item is gone. We're gonna put in a physics process physics process is going to wait for us to press the return key which is the enter key we're going to check that our current message is not equal to nothing if it isn't then we want to rpc unreliable send chat which is going to be a remote call and we'll do the create message so let's put the create message in now let me make this full screen so you can see it rpc which is remote procedure call Unreliable, which is UPD if you're from um, a networking background, you've got TCP and UPD, UPD is a lot faster. 
we're going to send chat, which is actually a function, and this is the argument, which is going to be create message, which we've got down here. So let's explain this. Current message is obviously going to return back a string, and this is going to be passed into send chat. And how we do that is we use BB codes because we're using a rich text label. Open square brackets B is bold. Open square brackets color is what color we're going to use. And in the lobby, we define what color we're using. Then we add the network username. We then close the color and close the bold, and we add the message at the end of it. Now for our PC unreliable to work, we do need a function. So let's make the send chat one. Remote function will be called on every other connection that's connected to this one. And we'll make sure that they update their history with the text that we've just created from create message. So the quirky thing about this is that RPC unreliable send chat will only be called on every other connection. It won't be called on this connection. We have to do that ourselves. Once we've asked everyone to update their history with our current message, we then also have to update our own history too. And we just do it the same. We then make sure that our message text, which we've just sent is now blank. If there's no text, we don't want to send anything. So just make sure that the message text equals blank. And that's our chat room finished. So I'm going to stop full screen in this. So we're going to go back to our network. Now, because this is an auto load, it's really important that it's loaded at all times. I should have done this earlier, but I'll do it now. We'll go to our project, project settings, auto loads, network, add it and make sure you do add it and it's clicked and now it's a singleton. This means it's going to be loaded at all times. We're going to add in a ready to this. We'll put it at the top and we're going to connect to two signals. You'll notice we use get tree again because that's where our network here is going to be. So we're going to make sure that we've got a connected to server and it's to be connected. So this is the client when it connects to a server, not the host. Server disconnected is when the server disconnects. This won't happen if the client disconnects and we'll then check for server disconnected. This is just for quality of life purposes. So let's put the two function in now. When this client connects to a server, we're gonna call connected. We're gonna then compile some data and I'm putting it into an array and the key is going to be our unique ID and the value will be our username. This is for obviously our username list. We then do something different here. We do R PC unreliable ID. This means we're gonna actually send to just one client and you'll notice it's one. Now, if you can remember, network unique ID equals one is the server. So we are only sending this to the server. We then need an update user method and we'll send the argument compile data, which is the key and the username. And obviously, because we've connected the server successfully, we want to enter the chat room. Obviously, if we, the server disconnects, we want to use an OS alert, which is just a message box, and then it will force us into the lobby, which is only the clients. Now, obviously, we need our update user, which is only going to be called on the server. So let's do that now. So you notice I've put in two functions. I'll explain that. So we've got a remote function again, of course, because we're calling this from RCP and reliable ID. We've also got our user, which is the compiled data, which is the network key and the username. We get our user list, which is a dictionary. We then get our key, which is zero, which is the unique ID of the client that's just connected to the server. And then we make sure that the value of that is the username, which is also passed through here. So when the player connects to the server, he sends this command. And because it's going to only the server, then this on the server will run the remote function update user. We then emit signal update user list, which is just updating the actual item list, which we found in the chat room. Now that the server has done the hard work of sorting out the usernames, we'll then make sure all the clients update their user list too. And we do that by saying RCP unreliable client update will pass in the updated user list. This means that the server is doing the work rather than everyone doing the work at the same time, which it does cause confusion. So this function here, remote func client update, will be called on all the clients, but not on the server because the server's already done it. And of course, we've just passed in the server's new updated user list. And of course, we want to also update user list on the client too. So I'll update the chat rooms item list. To test this, I am going to have to export it because we need multiple instances. We can do that now. Make sure everything is saved. Go to your project, go to export. You'll see that I've already got one here. I'm going to remove it for this tutorial. Add one, go to whichever operating system you're on. I'm on Windows desktop. Now this won't work for HTML5. You have to use a different um, network protocol. Windows desktop, I'm going to call this online chat room. I'm going to embed the pack. So it's just an exe file, export, I don't want export debug on. You'll notice I've already got it from previously. I'll overwrite it. Close it. Now what I can do is 
it's in my bin folder, which is stands for binary. If I right click it, open in file manager, double click, I'll call this host, double click, I'll call this st, that's host, and join. And as you can see, it should work. So they're both red. Great, so let's just do another one. I'll call this Darren, and we'll call it Pepple. Join. Tester Pep. And as you can see, everything's working. Um, let's leave here. Brilliant. And if the server leaves, awesome. So this concludes the end of the tutorial. Right now, for you, this will only work if you've port forwarded your 999 port number. If you haven't, this will only work on a local IP address, but it won't work on a WAN. To do that, you need to do port forwarding, and I'm gonna do a tutorial on that. I just wanna say thank you if you got this far, and if you want, I've got a Discord channel, I've got really friendly people on there, and I'm really exploring network coding at the moment. So if you need any help, let me know on Discord, and I hope to see you there, bye-bye.